Life Audio. Hello. Thank you for listening to your daily Bible verse, the podcast that examines one verse each day to learn more about God and His will for us. I'm your host, Carol McCracken, and after a short word from our sponsor, we'll dive into today's Bible verse, 2 Corinthians 12, 9. Today's Bible verse is 2 Corinthians 12, 9. But he said to me, my grace is sufficient for you, for my power is made perfect in weakness. When we step into the role of a teacher, which we all do to some degree in our lives, we often find ourselves challenged with what we aim to guide others through. It's as if the lessons we share become personal journeys, each word spoken echoing back to us in moments of trial or doubt. I can remember writing about how Christians should not fear bad news, and during that time, my uncle was diagnosed with cancer. A family member's marriage resulted in separation, and another family member went through some scary life changes. I didn't want to check my phone or texts, but I was supposed to take my own teaching and live it, right? Faith is important, and I'm in trouble if doubts begin to test me, right? In 2 Corinthians 12, 9, the Apostle Paul speaks of finding strength in weakness, Proclaiming, but he said to me, My grace is sufficient for you, for my power is made perfect in weakness. This verse resonates deeply with those who find themselves grappling with doubt even as they teach faith. Of all people, Paul knew weakness. He had some very public testing and trials. Paul suffered. God chose to have Paul suffer and teach him humility. Paul was planning churches and having massive success in his ministry. Lives were transformed as Paul taught of Jesus Christ. This kind of success could have been a temptation for Paul. God gave Paul something he referred to as a thorn in his flesh. This has been much debated. Scripture doesn't tell us what this thorn in the flesh is, so we can only speculate. Scripture does tell us that God gave it to Paul. Paul asked three times for it to be taken from him. In fact, the Greek word parakaleo, translates the word as implored. God did not remove it. God invited Paul to draw near to him so that he can endure his pain. Scholars suggest that Paul was humbled by his weakness, but God wanted Paul not only to be humble, but also to be strong. Paul had to trust God even when he didn't get the answer for his desired thorn removal. Paul couldn't be confident in his own strength, but he had gods to lean on. God's power was displayed in Paul's weakness. Paul was weak in his encounters with insults and persecution. Life wasn't easy for him. I suggest that Paul's faith couldn't have been perfect the whole time. I mean, we've all snapped or been grumpy from lack of sleep or when we've been hungry. But God gave Paul grace. Grace is the love and favor of God on us. Even when we doubt, we aren't outside of God's grace. Jesus gives it to us freely and doesn't retract his offer when we sin. It meets us in our weakness. David Guzik, a commentator, puts it like this. Whose grace is it? It's the grace of Jesus. Isn't his love, his favor enough? What will Jesus fail at? Remember, too, that Jesus suffered thorns, so he cares and knows. And Paul wrote, God's grace is sufficient for you. That's us, even when we doubt, even when we don't feel like we have enough faith. Paul seemed to have had good self-awareness. He knew after lots of living that he had both strengths and weaknesses, and he knew that God would give Paul what he didn't have in his own power. Paul knew that this way people would see Christ through Paul, because there's no way Paul could have accomplished all that God called him to do on his own. God calls us to do the same. As we share messages of hope and assurance, we may encounter moments of uncertainty, moments where our own faith feels fragile. Yet in these very moments, we come to understand the depth of God's grace and the power of His presence. In our lives, it's crucial to acknowledge that doubt and faith can coexist within us. 
It's about embracing our humanity and imperfections, even as we strive to lead others towards God. When doubt strikes us in teaching or leading, we can pray, seeking the strength and clarity we need to continue on the path of faith. This self-acceptance is key to our leadership, allowing us to lead with compassion and understanding. Through our vulnerability, we connect with our own struggles and those of our recipients. Our authenticity becomes a measure of hope, demonstrating that faith isn't the absence of doubt, but the courage to believe even in times of uncertainty. Let's pray. Dear Lord in heaven, thank you for who you are. Thank you of what you've done for us. Lord, you had your own thorns. And thorns are not pleasant to us. I don't know if they're pleasant to anyone. But Lord, in our weakness, your strength shines. Help us, Lord, when we have doubts. Help us when we suffer. Help us to make the decision to draw nearer to you. No matter what we do or where we go, you are always there. And we can always lean on you. Even if, like Paul, we don't get the answers we want sometimes, you always answer us. Help us, Lord, to be more like you. And help us to get past our doubt and uncertainty. And to trust completely in you. In your name we pray. Amen. Amen. 